Hey guys, it's Morgan. Welcome back to another weekly schlog or shop vlog here at Highland Cycles in Washington, Colorado. If you guys are new here, consider sticking with us through the end of the video. Uh, maybe if it looks like it's an awesome thing, give us a subscribe. We just recently hit 25,000 subscribers. We're shooting for 50 is our next big goal. Uh, I will do something cool at 30. All you guys are wondering when I'm going to box Zach. Honestly, I'm just terrified of getting hit in the face by that man. So it may never happen, but I might make Richie box him. So that'd be kind of cool. We'll, <laughs> we'll put those two in the ring together. Uh, but yeah, this is our little shop vlog where we show you all kinds of cool dirt bike stuff. Uh, we do uh, ride reviews, reviews, ride videos, race videos, I don't know, whatever. We're going to Baja here soon to race uh, down there. So it's a cool place to hang out. Join us. Here we go. All right, guys, first on my lift of the week is this uh, 150 KTM 150SX. Uh, you'll see it's not all here, obviously. <laughs> um, if you guys don't know, uh, the last year of the carbureted 150 or N125 was uh, 22. I had a 21, mine was brilliant. The 22s had problems with the crankshafts uh, coming apart in them, and they fixed it by. Uh, <laughs> asking for your ECU back and reflashing the ECU to set a rev limiter, which I don't know that any two strokes ever had a rev limiter before, but that was a weird way to fix the problem. Um, obviously it doesn't really fix the problem. It just masks the whole situation and hides that symptom. So I sent the, this gentleman before it blew up, uh, came to me and said, man, I've heard about this. I'm like, yeah, it's a real thing. He's like, I want to fix this early. I don't want to have problems. I also want to do some cool guy motor stuff to this motor. So can you help me out? I'm like, yes. So we split the cases, we took it out and we sent the crank to Crankworks in Arizona. They are literally the best in the business as far as building cranks. Uh, they do it for pro circuit. They do it for all the big race teams. They are like amazing people. Uh, and he said, yeah, he actually explained the whole thing. And so with the deburring of the, I think is the web, any, like the crank webs had some weirdness going on where the pin was pushed through because KTM switched manufacturers. I don't know all of it. You can call those guys and find out. He told me the whole story. I just can't remember all of it. But basically, there was some mess ups in manufacturing that would cause uh, premature wear on some stuff that would then get metal in it and cause the bearing to come apart and the whole thing. Um, obviously, it was worse if you're high RPM. That's why they did the ECU thing. Nice work, KTM, trying to dodge the bullet, but it's Anyway, not really a fix in my opinion. So we had Crankworks rebuild it. That thing is shiny and brand spanky now. Now we're gonna be putting this thing back together. Uh, I have one of the case halves in the ultrasonic. You can hear that right now. Um, I wanna show you guys the epitome of uh, how to take care of an air filter. This person, uh, Becky, a good friend of ours, uh, hasn't been riding much because she um, she's just been super busy this summer. She helps run a, uh, an orchard and a vineyard. I don't know. She does. Anyway, there's a lot of farmy stuff and she's been super busy. She hadn't gotten to ride. She got out, rode, had a great time. Nothing went wrong with the bike, but she's like, yeah, I want you to do a full service on this thing. So Richie was doing that and he <laughs> took it apart. And that's what the air filter looked like. If you guys have watched this channel long, you know, how much I struggle with people not doing well in their air filters. Well, that thing's perfect. We're not even going to clean it because there's literally no dirt on it. Uh, the oil that came out of the motor was about the same. We did change that though, and an oil filter. Uh, but yeah, there you go, guys. Take care of your stuff. It will take care of you. It won't have problems. It'll be good. Richie, how's it going today? Good. <laughs> you enjoy working on bikes that have really nothing that needs to be done. Yeah, and it's honestly pretty nice. Yeah, bolts are already tight. <laughs> yeah, bolts are tight, it's all ready to go. That's a plus. We are gonna be changing out the air, um, hour meter though. It's got the original, well, it's not original because it's not in the original spot. It's got a TTO hour meter on it, which is really nice, but uh, it's out of batteries. The bike's at 12 or something. What's up, man? And uh, anyway, it ran out of batteries, so we're putting a new hour meter on it too. And then, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So guys, uh, 
<laughs> Leander and I were just talking about, I have to say a massive thank you to Brian Lynn, who sent me a bunch of stuff for Mexico. Uh, he sent me some cool like bath towel things, like quick like shower in the desert. Also great for wiping up all kinds of cool stuff. Anyway, they're basically just burly, burly wet wipes, um, which is awesome. And then he also sent me uh, some more Ultrasorbs, which are these things, super cool. And he also sent me uh, an external catheter and I was describing that to uh, Leandra as to why a desert racer, long distance desert racer might need an external catheter. If you know, comment below. Um, <laughs> but it's a funny, funny conversation. So anyway, uh, we're getting the sucker back together. Got the cases all cleaned up in the ultrasonic. We are dropped the crankshaft in, it's all happy. Uh, gonna put this other case half on after I do a new seal. Now, normally we do new seals anyway, but this one's crazy important because it is captured from this side. And I don't know why they did the SXs like this. It's only the SXs. Um, the XCs, XCWs do not have it like that. So that's dumb. I don't know why they do that. Uh, it's like the old KX. So I'm gonna drive that out with a punch, put a new one in, then slap this thing together. I'll bring you guys back in when we're starting to put the top end back on because he did, had some cool stuff done to that. All right, guys, got the motor all together. Um, well, the bottom end all together. Now putting the top end together, just a vertex piston. Um, not just a vertex piston. I like vertex piston, a vertex piston. And here is the uh, cylinder. Um, it's gonna be kind of hard to tell on this video, but like that is all nice and happy in there. Uh, they've got the ports moved around a little bit and all dremeled. Again, it's pretty hard to tell on uh, the camera, but I'm not sure who did this, but they did a great job. Really excited about that. So I'm gonna slap this thing together. Uh, and then he is actually, I think, gonna pick it up and put it in the frame and fire it up. So um, we're pretty much almost done with this thing. So um, yeah, I'll uh, check back in if there's anything super interesting, uh, then we'll get on to the next job. All right, guys, next job's on our lifts, which is a lot of things going on. We got my kids' bikes here. Um, got this uh, YZ250, Thomas's YZ250. We're putting tires on. We were doing Tusk tires, uh, MXT35s for the race in Aztec, New Mexico this weekend. So super stoked. Thank you very much, Rocky Mountain ATV MC, for that. Um, it's always nice having fresh tires. And the boys are using the Neutron Speed Pro Tire Changer, which, guys, I can say for a fact, 100% is better than the Rabiconda. 100%. Like, the only downside from it to the Rabiconda is the moving of the pieces. You got to loosen those up instead of the cam locks. But that's also a bonus like upside to this because it's more secure. They don't move around. The Delrin uh, slides for the, the spokes are brilliant. That thing's awesome. I like it better than the Rabiconda. Sorry, Rabiconda. Um, but they beat you at your own game. <laughs> that's a really, really good tire machine. So. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for that, or you can just use our Rocky Mountain link that's below uh, and go find that thing if you want to buy one. They're totally worth it, 100%. Um, and like I said, that tire looks real good. That's going to be real good for this weekend. So I'm excited. And then my next job uh, is diagnosing this BMW that doesn't get fuel. So make sure you stick around here for the video. We'll be diving into that thing here real soon. All right, guys, next job is some suspension revalving. <clears throat> we were doing some TBT love to Miss Brittany Gallegos' uh, Beta 300RR. She just got a ride. What, what is she, what's her official position, Richie? Uh, Full factory? A support deal, and then it'll end up leading into factory. Yeah, so she got a support deal with Beta, um, and so we're setting her up with some really, really good suspension. And uh, yeah, hopefully that's gonna lead into a full factory ride. She's really fast. She's from Colorado, super cool person. And uh, yeah, we're getting her done. So we got the forks all valved. Uh, everything's all done, but uh, <clears throat> we are waiting on race tech for some spacers to lower it because Brittany is T90. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, she doesn't want to ride a small bike like an x or something like that. She needs the performance and suspension of a real bike but it does need to be a little bit shorter. So uh, we are waiting on the fork stuff for that, but we're gonna take the shock apart now, we're gonna valve it, get it all dialed in. Um, yeah, it should be really, really sweet. And we'll hopefully check in with her um, 
down the road and see how she likes it. Uh, Richie's busy doing super cool race stuff like putting cool seat covers on. She's got a Mako 360, new bars. What else, Richie? Uh, just bolt checking, lock tightening. Shining. This is a bike she bought herself because she's waiting for the other three to show up in the bed. Nice. So yeah, getting her all ready to rock and roll. All right, guys, so the last job of the schlug is going to be this BMW, diagnosing it and seeing why it won't start. Uh, the customer has done some research and thinks that it has to do with a relay for the fuel pump. So that's good. Uh, they've done some early work. Uh, we're going to see if we can make it run or make any noise at all when uh, we spray some brake cleaner. That's going to be the first thing we do. Um, actually, the first thing I'm going to do is, um, let's see, turn it on and see if I can hear the fuel pump. Oh, you guys are a little close. There we go. Sorry. There we go. I'll figure out how to make it turn over. Now we got to find the air intake. Oh, there we go. All right, so it does run. Does seem like it's not getting gas. So let's dig in and see if we can find any information about this fuel pump relay and where it might be. So guys, the Beamer looks like it might have, uh, so that looks like the ECU. <clears throat> Here's the, this is probably the fuel pump right here. So I'll have to dig into there. Got to figure out how to see if we can trigger that thing. Also, it could be a fuse. Let's see. Let's check the easy things first. Of course, if it's a fuse, you then have to wonder uh, what made it blow. But, all right. I'm gonna set you guys down, grab my pliers and pull those things out and see if we can find one that's blown. All right, none of them are visibly blown, but we're gonna go ahead and get the meter out and uh, check them uh, for continuity and make sure they're actually good. This would probably be the faster way to do it. <laughs> um, whatever, sometimes you get lucky to see it. But set this thing to continuity so you can hear it beep and you just touch each of the little things. Little experience exposed pieces all right so they're all good let's hunt down that fuel pump relay all right guys so i sorry i didn't bring you in while i was testing this stuff it's just kind of a pain to film it but let me show you what i did um so i took the cover off the fuel pump this is obviously the pump uh we got these wires in here i'm pretty sure that the relay is actually in the pump. Um, now maybe we can take it off. I don't know. Um, I might try to pull this out here in just a second, but uh, let me show you what I did. I had to slice the wires back a little bit on these. Uh, the brown is ground. I used my power probe. Uh, if you guys don't know what those are, they're awesome. If you do a lot of electrical diagnosis, I highly recommend getting one. They're relatively inexpensive and they're really cool. So I had it hooked up to positive battery here, which is kind of interesting. They have a little, just a positive thing because the battery's buried in there. But um, so that was cool. There, ground on the motor, <clears throat> and I could uh, check it. Both uh, the browns are ground, so that's cool. And then uh, both these wires are supposed to be power, and they didn't have any. Uh, power to them, but even when I clicked the the power and forced power to them, nothing happened here. So I have a feeling we've got a situation uh, with the actual pump or the, whatever these are actually plugging into. I, 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 I don't know. I'm going to see if I can take this out. If I can take this out and like look at it and see if there's an actual relay on the inside of this thing, because uh, that's usually how these things work. Um, and it just is interesting. There's no power. It also could be an ECU problem. The problem with these 
especially European things, it's like kind of overbuilt, lots of things going on. Anyway, it's it, these are great bikes. I'm not bashing this motorcycle at all. They're actually very good. They're kind of slow and heavy and all that, but they're they're great. They usually don't have problems, so I'm not bashing this bike because um, I actually kind of like these things for just dual sporting around and putting around. Um, but when you start adding all this crazy complexity into the thing, it also has an alarm on it. So I don't think I made sure that I switched that off, I think, so it would turn on and actually turn over. So I think we're good there. Uh, but I got to figure out why, uh, what's up with the power situation, because it should have power when you turn the key on or when you hit the button. Oh, actually, I didn't do it with the button running. So I got to check that again. So I'm going to check that again. Because sometimes things only, uh, <clears throat> fuel pump only runs when the thing, when you're hitting the start button and then when the bike is actually on and running. So I'll check that and make sure because I didn't have any power to that by itself. Uh, and then, um, yeah, from there we might pull the fuel pump out. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. All right, guys. I figured I really should show you the power probe because it's super cool. And it's camo, so you can barely see it. So, <laughs> so it's pretty sweet. So it's got a really long cord. Uh, so you can work on like a trailer or whatever, uh, but you put red on power, black on ground. Now you have this, you can check voltage. So we got 13 volts in the battery. Um, this checks ground. So here we go. Let me show you what we do. So come over here to one of the things that's supposed to be power. Again, I've peeled the insulation back. So it shows ground. You should be able to put power to it. It's interesting because it only goes up to 9.7 when I do that. Which again makes me think maybe there's something wrong inside there that it won't let 12 volts you know flow through it so then we'll check this other one that's supposed to be power sometimes and then supply 12 volts there so that goes to 12.9 and nothing's happening so it's interesting after i hit it once it says four nine it's like it's storing like it's a capacitor or something but that so drops but that would normally drop like that because of you know you're using some of the power for starter so let's go here so that goes that bumps up that bumped to i don't know if you guys could see that but it bumped to nine volts when i did that so i think the power is all working i think it's inside here so let's see if we can take that pump out and look inside there, if there's a relay in there, if there's not, we're gonna have to get a whole pump, I think. But anyway, also power probes, get one. They're really cool. Again, only if you're gonna do a bunch of electrical diagnosis. And yeah, where I peeled that uh, insulation back, I'm obviously gonna have to tape that up and make it right again. But for now, that's good. All right, we're gonna use the back end of a rubber mallet and another mount to see if we can hit it and loosen it up. Obviously can't be hitting it with anything hard or you'll just chew that ring right up. It's just plastic. There we go. I'm sure there's some Bavarian tool that I'm supposed to buy, but this works without messing anything up. I have seen on big beamers, lots of beamers, the fuel controller a lot of times is inside the pump. And sometimes they have like a little, I've seen them in the past where they have like a little jumper thing, like on the 1200s, there was a jumper deal. I think even Beamer sold it. Uh, that you could use to get the thing to work, you know, if in case it broke while you're on the road, it would get you through until you got to a dealer, but I don't know about this one. Oh, uh, come on. There we go. Highland Cycles is Morgan. All right, guys, there's the pump. Let's see what we can see. There's definitely not 
the relay, it's just wires. But we should be able to hook up power to this thing and just force it to work. So I don't know why it's not. Um, let's see. Guys, I should be able to just turn this pump on with hot and um, ground. So I'm actually just gonna grab a battery and just touch it for sure, 100%, and just make sure that there's nothing. Actually, you know what? I, I know what I'll do is I'll I'll pull power, use my my uh, power probe, and then just take a jumper line and provide ground. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do jumper cable to ground. To ground. Gotta be careful guys, we're working on this much gas, not to make any sparks, which is a little bit sketchy situation here, but we're gonna be all right. We're gonna be very, very careful. All right, so now, I know the pump has a good ground because we're ground of the motor. Now I'm going to provide power to the power thing and see what happens. Nothing. No juice. You can actually feel it like clicking in my hand. So yeah, pump's junk. There we go. Problem solved. Uh, now we just got to order a BMW fuel pump. So, uh, I don't know how hard that's going to be, but we will figure it out. This gas tank looks like it's got some kind of ick in it. Like maybe it's old gas and maybe that's what clogged it up and just finally killed it. Anyway, there you guys go. Thank you so much for joining me for this week's slog, guys. Make sure you subscribe so you can see uh, if I am correct about this. I feel like I am. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, we, uh, yeah, we'll be back next week with another schlag. Uh, if you guys are new here and you just watched all the way to the end of this video, this is just one of the kind of videos we do. We do product reviews, we do tool reviews, we do ride videos, we make fun of people videos. <laughs> we uh, do a live uh, podcast every Thursday morning at 7.30 a.m. Mountain Time. So join us here on YouTube or Facebook for that one. Uh, make sure you watch all of our socials, facebook.com uh, slash Highland Cycles, Instagram at Highland Cycles. And uh, yeah, we appreciate everything, guys. We'll see you on the next one.